Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. Welcome to the May Garden Tour. So um, it's been a while and I thought today is a great day to show you how the garden is doing after all the tulips and daffodils have uh, died back. We've had a few days and nights of good rain. So a lot of moisture in the, in the soil. The flowers have been loving it. The veggies have been loving it. And as such, everything is growing very, very rapidly. So as always, I'll say we start here by the vegetable garden. But first, let me share with you the recent arrangements that I made and also show you this beautiful Dautzia that is currently blooming. So this one has been here now for, this is the second season and it's been loving this position. And the containers are also growing really, really beautifully. The mixture of the petunias that I made here together with that grass is looking gorgeous. The limelight hydrangeas here on the roadside are also growing really beautifully. Let's check out the sweet peas. Hmm. The sweet peas is growing beautifully and so are all the flowers around it. I added that basket there just to fill that, that gap that uh, was existing between the two window box containers that I used. So back here in the garden, in the vegetable patch, I would like to ideally have just kohlrabi here and the beets that are coming up nicely, but the potatoes are kind of taking over. And I do have this uh, net up here uh, to kind of protect the beets from the birds. Over here, I did put in some elephant garlic that you can see coming up here. This one, and there we have another one and you can see the row of elephant garlic. My marigold is already blooming and the tiny little plants that you see here, those are carrots that I put in there, coming up nicely. The sugar snap peas is exploding. Actually yesterday, I was so surprised to see that I had some uh, peas actually <laughs> already on the stalks and look at this one as well. So a lot coming up here. I'm struggling to get them to stick to the trellising that I built here. But look at that. It's becoming a real mini forest of sugar snap peas. I pruned this lavender uh, back in winter really aggressively. And look at how much growth it has put on. And I'm sure very soon we'll be able to see some blooms here on the lavender. Right next to the sugar snap peas, I still have my garlic going. I really hope I get big balls out of this garlic. I did not pull the, the onions because uh, there is hope in sight that I might be getting a few large bulbs, as you can see down there, even though I have a lot of flowering going on on these onions. And just uh, hoping to get a few big bulbs out of this harvest. So the onions are still here. What I did take out, however, is all the spinach. I did that actually this morning. And I've replaced those with the peppers, uh, aubergines that I put here. All of these are things that I started from seeds, except for this pak choy over here. I also transplanted the phenol that I had in other beds. And I have a few tomatoes back there. So I definitely have enough kohlrabis to go. You can see that here, the, kohl the kohlrabis that I recently transplanted over here are doing great. And then here in the middle, I removed or cut back all the tulips and daffodils that were growing here and planted um, <laughs> the snapdragons. And they're picking up nicely, really happy with how they're doing and looking forward to that beautiful, colorful show that they'll present here in a few weeks' time. I have another mixed bed here with the onions that I planted in, in fall or winter, and then some tomatoes, some potatoes, some potatoes that I added later on. The potatoes in the grow bag here, in the extra large grow bags are going strong, as you can see. And here, I have enough letters to go for the next couple of days and weeks. <laughs> so now we're taking a look at the rest of the garden, the borders, the flowers and the trees. So I recently found this salix. Um, 
it's an interesting tree here so i'm loving how it's uh, looking in this container i'll probably have to dress that with some flowering annuals uh, just to bring in a puff of color but it's not looking too bad at all so this morning i harvested some leeks it was going to see these are the leeks that i left uh, in the hope that they will produce bigger stems they didn't do that and they were all going to seed so i pulled them and i'm going to be processing those later on over here i don't have any bulbs left i cut back everything i'm going to be putting in the what are these again oh some zinnias instead i'm going to be planting all those zinnia seedlings in this garden bed here and because they grow about 90 centimeters up, I'm going to prune this uh, hedge of boxwood first, clean up the space and plant in all the zinnias. Uh, and I have a lone allium there. Uh, the idea was to have all of this space filled with alliums by now, but uh, it didn't quite work out. So right next to that, you'd notice that my hibiscus topiaries, my hibiscus trees, hibiscus Syriacus, Syriacus, whatever hibiscus it is, the one that produces the many colorful blooms, is leafing out. I have three of those, one here, one in that corner, and another one over there. So I still need to do my summer containers over here. What I'm planning to do is use some of my uh, seedlings and replace the spring bloomers that are looking very exhausted right now. I have a, a dahlia that I planted here and other things going on. That boxwood there. All right, so my basket, my concrete basket is also in need of some summer care. Um, all the things that you see here are the things that I had in winter slash spring, which are done blooming now. The dusty miller is exploding over here. So I'm going to reorganize uh, this space and uh, put that dusty miller back, really, you know, at the back because it's obviously huge and can afford to be at the back because we'll still get to see it and uh, leave room for the smaller plants that may need uh, more space. The chestnut tree, the small chestnut tree, by the way, that is my seed tree over there. <laughs> and the chestnut tree is also like, it has doubled in size or maybe tripled in size. It's getting bigger and I'll probably need to keep, um, to keep that really, really trimmed. The tiny lavender angustifolia bushes are still tiny, but uh, they are also growing increasing in size looking at the borders you notice that i still have a lot of spring bloomers that are marking their presence there i've cut back all the tulips daffodils and everything else and we have lots of things coming up i have the gladiolus coming up i have new things that i'm going to be putting in this is um a salvia that i tried to grow from seed and uh, well the seedlings that I got out of those are here in the back those are the tiny little things there in the ground and this is what I actually would like to see so I got this <laughs> from the garden center and I mean look at those blooms that is a beautiful salvia so I'm going to be planting those and looking forward to seeing how they do here my peony back there has brought it up beautifully. So we're going to be seeing those blooms soon. And this is a giant hosta that is, uh, you know, making its way to its full size here. It's looking gorgeous. I love the leaves. This is a beautiful hydrangea, the living phantom. And I look forward to seeing those blooms really, really soon. No buds yet on this hydrangea. I have three of those in this order. 
Then I have all my rubecchias, the ones that I bought uh, from Bear Roots. This is the Echinacea purpura. This is a new plant that I brought here, the Chinese black pearl. I don't know much about it, but I'm curious. So I've planted that there and I'll be observing it. That right there, those are the, what is this? The gay feathers, yeah, these are the gay feathers coming up here. We have another hosta there. Here are the delphiniums, bought up already, ready to present their show really soon. My mystery rose is full of aphids. I need to, uh, you know, keep an eye on that. And a lot of things coming up here. Yeah, these are the, the Annabelle, the pink Annabelle hydrangeas here. So that's it with this border. Now in this corner over here, it's still very much work in progress. My red umbrella Japanese maple tree has finally leafed out. I struggled a bit. I was really scared that it wasn't going to make it. And then I remembered that back in winter when I put it here in this container, I actually didn't plant it. I just put in there and put soil on it. So I went back, took out the whole tree out of the container and did some proper planting, spread out the roots. And since then it has been doing much better. Right here, these containers, I'm yet to work on them. Oh, I've already planted some of my coleo seedlings here, as you can see. And the other containers, I have a few things that I'm planning to put here. These hydrangeas are loving their life here. They are filling in nicely, looking gorgeous. Putting on buds, look at that. Beautiful. And I love the pop of color that is coming from the back of those hydrangeas in the form of the alliums. So these are the Annabelle hydrangeas and these are the ones that are looking gorgeous. These are the best ones to put here. And what I'm planning to do is to extend this bed like here, up right there. And these containers will move and the Annabelle hydrangeas will go all the way down here. What I did here is to add in two new, very low, small hydrangeas, pinnacle hydrangeas. And uh, these are the living touch of pinks. Uh, I, had, I bought them last year, but um, I, I, they didn't bloom. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they will look like. They're going to stay really, really low. They're going to stay low and the Annabelle obviously are going to grow bigger and bigger and take over the whole place and then the limelights over here they also the limelights are not uh, loving it here I mean the big one is, is looking great but the smaller ones are way way back behind compared to the ones by the roadside a lot of work to do here at the back starting with my plans to plant the dahlias in this corner. I've been working on that. If you remember from the pre previous video, uh, the boxwoods were not planted here. The Leyland Cypress was definitely not here. So this whole bed was not existing. Uh, New England, New England Astas, these ones here, they're going to grow really, really tall. You know, they're going to grow right up there and they'll bloom in autumn in fall and then i have the hosta there you can see that all of my dahlias uh, have leafed out and you know starting to look really really great look at this one here that is looking gorgeous that is a good dahlia to put in there and the mix that i have here i have some cactus dahlia some dinner plates some ball dahlias so that's it over here on this side. I have a temporary fence or enclosure here in place to keep out my dog because the dog was ruining my front yard garden beds. And so I have uh, limited his access to the garden. I've limited your access 
to the backyard, you no longer have access to the front yard, guys. Do you agree? Guys, stop it. Say hello. Good boy. You're so cute, okay? But you stay here at the back. So this is the bins area that I'm in the process of creating. Um, I still need to fill it up with gravel down here. I have a few pots here with some veggies. And then I decided to put my sweet potato vines here. And down there you see or you might spot some uh, sprouting going on. And those are all the bins. That is the beans that I'm planning to, to go here. The plan is to have the beans trellising all around this metal frame that I used last year to grow my beans. So hopefully in a few weeks time, all of this will be covered with uh, beans. This whole circle garden area is something that is yet to be finalized. So this is the back garden here, the open space. The macrophylla hydrangea border or line here at the back is uh, coming up nicely. They are all leafing out, but there's also a lot of weeds coming up there in that stone garden. The hedge is exploding back here. I need to cut all that back. And the grass, well, it could, it could look better, but it's okay. All right, now moving to where we have more fun things to look at. The asparagus is coming up. So they are coming up, the asparagus, and that is beautiful to see. That is really good to see. I noticed that I had a few that were exposed. The crown was still exposed. But um, I have a, I have a, a good uh, germination or sprouting rate on the asparagus. And I'm really happy with that. So I look forward to seeing an asparagus bush building up here in this area. And that tree over there, that is a, a pear tree. It made lots of little fruits this year, waiting to grow bigger. In this box, I put in a few things. So I put my sweet potato tuber here with two of those and I hope that they do well. I also have some strawberries here and I had a, a few um, leeks, seedlings too many that I decided to put here as well. But also a marigold, as you can see. The pumpkin patch is coming up nicely. Yesterday, I transplanted a few more corn seedlings here. I started these in a bucket somewhere and I decided to transplant them here. The ones that I had put here the seeds, the corn seeds that I put here at the beginning, I only had a f about 50% success rate because the rest were eaten by slugs. But I'm happy that I had a few seeds that I had started somewhere else and that I could uh, transplant here. I have quite a, a huge variety of pumpkins going here. Here are the Brussels sprouts coming up nicely they are a favorite of the slugs that is a red cabbage that I have there so the Brussels sprout is mostly attacked by slugs but um, I'm having fewer and fewer slugs now and that is good because then I don't have to worry too much about my crops here so the goal the goal would be to have the pumpkins growing towards the back there and covering this whole space so that would be full of pumpkin leaves and whatever it's all going to cover up back there are more new england asters here and this tree right there this is one of those four purchases that i made i mean look at those look at that lime green color it's just so beautiful and the asters are going to grow here beautifully and just cover this whole space they bloom in fall and this tree is a the golden spirit. The leaves are so soft and fresh. So the plan is for it to establish here and provide a beautiful contrast here. I put in my okra seedlings here in the garden bed in which I have the potatoes back here. I I had a, I didn't know where to put the okras and yesterday 
yesterday I finally decided that I was going to plant them here I think uh, they don't necessarily stand in the way of the of the potatoes and so they can they'll most likely coexist and uh, grow together and as you would notice it looks like the potato row has a few gaps in between I checked that yesterday when I was planting the okras and so that the other potato seeds that I use are just a bit late with the sprouting so they'll probably come up a bit later in the meantime the other ones are already up and going and so are the carrots coming up nicely I have done some some thinning in some areas and in others I have failed to do so we we'll probably have to catch up on that on the, the thinning as you can see here this is a big big a bunch of carrots seedlings growing here and that is not necessarily good for their development so I need to remove a few and just leave enough to get a good harvest so here are the shallots what I thought were onions are actually shallots that I had to thin out to give them more room and space so that each seed planted can then multiply into multiple onions that we call shallots look at that one I planted one here and I'm probably getting if all goes well poof, about 10 that is just incredible that one is a big multiplier so the shallots go in there so now leaving that and going to that room where we have the where we have the sedum autumn joy that is coming up but also the tulips that are now completely done and where I have to come and cut back the foliage at some point but the cedar autumn joy is growing fuller and taller every single day I did put in a few supertunia magentas because once the tulips are gone there are no real blooms to be seen here the cedar autumn joy is only going to bloom in autumn and that takes a long time I know that from my experience last year I thought I was waiting forever to see those blooms which are gorgeous once they come but it does take a while and so I think that the um, Supertunia magenta here is going to play a role of uh, you know providing some blooms some colorful things to look at while we wait for those beautiful blooms on the cedar autumn joy I have another interesting supertunia here it is pink with a white throat I don't know the name of it it's just a <laughs> it's looking gorgeous and I love it here are some seedlings that have not yet made it in the ground I have some sunflower seedlings here down there I'm going to be distributing my nasturtium uh, seedlings a bit everywhere in the garden the morning glories that are back there I'm not sure yet where I want to put them but um, yeah they're going to be distributed throughout the garden so that takes us now to the area where we have the greenhouse still up with the tomatoes but you'd notice that I've moved some uh, tomato bags grow bags out here and check out the size of my tomatoes already I have some blooms there. I still need to do some proper uh, staking of the tomatoes. I need to come out here and stake each and every tomato properly. Inside the greenhouse, I have the bigger bags in which I have planted multiple tomatoes, all of which are doing great. Really happy with how the tomatoes are coming up. Lots of blooms everywhere. Those are healthy looking tomatoes right there. So really happy. The okras, uh, on the other hand, are suffering a bit. I'm not quite sure why they're not happy, but I'm hoping that those that I planted out in the garden bed yesterday will feel much better and start looking a bit more, you know, alive. 
the strawberry tower it's a drawing yeah the strawberry tower is not looking all that bad i have a few that did not make it like that one over there but that's okay i can replace that most of them did make it and uh, i believe that once they establish they are going to provide lots of uh, fruits the raspberries are also looking beautiful i mean look at those raspberries remember the tiny little plants we planted back in winter this is how they have developed right now so this is really really rewarding this is very good to see very very nice to see i have a uh, some uh, issues on some plants but um so far nothing really major to worry about I did realize that I could have added some uh, strawberries on, uh, in the front of those uh, raised beds and I did find a few strawberries to, to add there so I might add in more strawberries with time where the raspberries are looking really good they're coming up nicely and look at how much sun they're getting back here my fig tree here, my fig bush in the container is uh, looking great. Look at how many fig fruits I have going on here. So that is not bad at all for such a small, tiny little tree. The blueberry bushes, this is the smallest of them all and it's already bearing lots of fruits. The bigger one right here is loaded with fruits however the fruits are really smaller on this bush i'm not sure what is happening yesterday i did come in because i is this is the one that i used to have on the balcony in which i had also planted the strawberries and the strawberries here are looking great they are loaded with strawberry fruits however the the blueberry bushes the blueberries are a bit smaller so yesterday i came in and fertilized and added in more soil and i hope that will give it a new kick start and uh, help those fruits to get a bit bigger so looking from this side i do have a few more containers over here some of which i have planted and others that i'm yet to to plant but i love i love the sight of that my biggest worry right now is how to manage the watering of all of the entire garden throughout the season. I may, I do have the material already in place. I bought it last year, but I've not managed to install one single irrigation system in any part of the garden. And so that is something that I plan to, to do in the next couple of weeks. And uh, the garden has gotten much more interesting now. The number of plants that I'm, that I'm growing this year, this season, has basically quadrupled quadrupled and so i need uh, i cannot waste all that time watering everything by hand i need to find or install a, a system that can uh, take away some of that some of that work look at all those spots on those peppers so that's it really i'm really happy with how everything is go going um oh yeah I wanted to say that uh, here in this area, I do have a few seedlings like the, the colio seedlings that are waiting and that is because I plan to, to plant them here. I'm going to be removing part of that uh, gravel that you see on this side, a big part of it, and I'm going to be planting sunflowers and colios in this hole, in this line here. So yeah, more, more things to come. All right, that was it for the May Garden Tour. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next video. Bye-bye.